Formalware takes inspiration from the electronics bench in today's project about a 47 ohm resistor, necktie. Resistors are used in circuits to limit or resist the flow of electricity. The colored stripes indicate the value as well as the expected accuracy of the resistor. Now to make a resistor necktie, cut a bunch of colored satin fabric strips to match your favorite resistor. You'll do this along the grain. So I'm folding it and then using my rotary cutter to make some nice straight strips. And then I'm going to construct a single piece of fabric from which to cut the tie pattern pieces. I'm using a serger to keep my seams extra clean, but you can go ahead and use a regular sewing machine for this if that's what you've got. My stripes are an inch wide. Half of that's for the actual stripe and then there's a quarter inch on each side for seam allowance. I started my stripes about five inches in from the end of my champagne colored fabric meant to represent the body of the resistor. Press the seams towards the center of each stripe and fold your fabric in a triangle to find the bias, a 45 degree angle from the grain of the woven threads. Lay out and cut your three main tie pattern pieces along this bias. A tie cut with the grain would try to twist on itself instead of draping flat and straight. It's less important that the two lining pieces be cut on the bias, so try it both ways if you're curious about the effects. Next, iron on some fusible interfacing to the wrong sides of the tie components. Here I'm using some parchment paper to protect my ironing surface from any sticky residue. Use a low iron setting for synthetics with no steam. Pin and sew the tie pieces together as shown, and then press the seams open. Press up the point of each of the four chevrons, and then press a quarter inch hem up the slanted edges. Line up and pin the lining pieces to the main body of the tie, and then use an invisible hem stitch to join the two. Be sure not to let the needle pierce the front surface of the tie. Iron a quarter inch hem along the two long edges of the tie, and then press these edges again to meet in the center back of the tie. If your tie fabric is very thin, install a piece of thick collar interfacing inside this fold with the ends tucked inside the lining. Finally, use an invisible ladder stitch to hand finish the center back seam of the tie. A high quality necktie is all about the details, so take your time and you'll end up with a really nice finished product. Making a necktie is a great way to get started in working with slippery, bias cut fabrics. So I hope I've given you the confidence to go out there and give it a try. See you next time.